General Echo is my name And people in the ghetto call me Rankin' Slackness And in the country, the people call me Slacky Tidy And the tourists all over the world say General Echo was regarded as one of the most original DJ in Jamaica. He was young, handsome, talented, comical with words, and at times explicit in his lyrics. An educated young man, he had chosen music as a career and left behind over 30 songs some albums and his own mark in the music industry that cannot be erased. His was a promising future when everything came to a tragic end on a Saturday in November of 1980. A lovable and smooth voice that brought joy to the music industry was silenced by the senseless act of a police officer. In this video, I look at the death registration form of General Echo to understand the details of the cause of his death and more. I am Nigel D. Summer. Welcome to Jamaican chapter. You cancel the plan and you go check big gun. True your you say in my business, ma. No true your you say in my business, ma. Cause who's on your mossy warm money, ma. Cause who's on your mossy warm money, ma. This is the death registration form of General Echo. I will be reading through this form to understand the official cause or causes of his death and read through his basic information on the form and elaborate. All right, so I'll start by looking at the top of the form. At the top of the form, it says death registration form, death in the district of Halfway Tree, Parish, St. Andrew. Below that in the first section, it says Place of Death, Derrymore Road, Kingston 10. So, General Echo died on Derrymore Road. Kingston 10. So it was Saturday, November 22, 1980. General Echo and his two friends, a guy called Colonel Flux and sound system owner Leon Johns, popularly known as Big John, the three of them were traveling along Derrymore Road in a Lincoln Continental car. The Lincoln Continental car was owned by Big John and Big John was the one at the steering wheel. They were driving to check on an amplifier for the sound system that Big John owned. 
the name of the sound system was called stereophonic very popular at the time okay so they were on their way to check on an amplifier as the car was going along Derrimore Road in the Constant Spring area there was a group of police officers probably doing road checks I'm not sure the police stopped the car Big John complied by stopping General Echo and Colonel Flox at this time were sitting in the passenger seats soon after the car stopped until today family members friends and the public were never given a, satis a satisfactory explanation as to what happened next the police opened the fire on the car spraying all the three men with bullets killing them on the spot the public the music industry in particular was shocked at the brutal killing of general echo the same shock was also extended for the deaths of Big John, owner of Stereophonic Sound System, and the selector, Colonel Flux. The questions as to why the police killed these three men was a big open question. What you have to remember, you know, that the 1980 was part of the period when the police investigate itself back in those days when a police officer killed someone the police itself investigates itself it was not until 2010 that Indicom was introduced as a, a body that operates independently of the police force and investigates killings, abuse and so on carried out by police officers. So there was no Indicom at that time. And so many individuals, many citizens got beaten. Their human rights violated. And a lot of them got killed. And who investigated? The police themselves. They established something called the Police Complaint Authority, which did nothing other than just take complaints. So now we have Indicom, and since Indicom was introduced, um, you see a lot of police officers being arrested for assault, abuse, and murder. And a lot of them, and, and some of them, I would say even a lot of them, when they go to court, they were not even convicted. And those who knew they would be convicted, they flee the island. So back in 1980, that would never happen. They, wouldn't be, they would not be fleeing the island. They would not be going to prison. So back in those days, police have free reign. They, a policeman don't like you in the shoot to kill you. And that was it. Nothing came out of it. 
but anyway there was an outcry by citizens in the time being a big memorial dance was held at Tivoli Center for Big John because the killings were controversial an inquest into the incident was ordered by the coroner of the parish of St. Andrew. The inquest was held to find out exactly what happened and to determine whether or not those police officers who pulled the trigger acted lawfully. You will be surprised, even shocked, at the conclusion of that inquest. The conclusion of that inquest is listed under the cause of death on this form. So I will get to the cause of death soon to read the details of the damage to General Echo's body. So I will get to the cause of death. And it's surprising. It's really surprising what this inquest concluded about the killing of General Echo, Colonel Flux, and Big John. I will get to that. But first, let's read through the basic details here on the farm. So below that we see particulars of deceased, date of death 22nd November 1980. In, in other words, date of death November 22. 1980. Below that, we see full name, and they wrote Earl Robinson. Below that, we see sex. And they wrote male so we all know yes he was a male beside that we see condition and they put bachelor condition means marital status on this form so his marital sta status was bachelor a bachelor is a male who is not married so it is clear that General Echo was not married at the time of his death. Below that we see age and they wrote 25. Um, he was not 25 years old at the time of his death. No, he was 24. He was 24 at the time of his death. Because he was born in December and he died in November. So he died the month prior to his birthday so he was not 25 he was actually 24 years old below that we see occupation or calling and they wrote disc jockey okay he was a disc jockey. Yeah, he was a disc jockey. 
and he was also a recording artist. Um, General Echo's music career started in the second half of the 1970s. Yes, in 1975 he started his own sound system called Echo Tone Hi-Fi. He moved on to join popular sound systems of others. He first joined Ray Symbolic, a popular sound system owned by a man called Ray from Waltham Park, St. Catherine. So some of you might were listening to this would remember that sound system and that Ray, the, the owner of the sound system, had died in a car accident. Anyway, General Echo, he left Ray Symbolic Sound System and he joined Stereophonic, a sound system owned by Leon John, aka Big John. The main selector of Stereophonic was Colonel Flux. So General Echo became close friend with Big John and Colonel Flux, both men with whom he would be gone down. Anyway, he also performed on Gemini a popular sound system which was started by Papa Gemini and another man called Papa Kenneth. Through his performances on Ray Symbolic, Stereophonic and Gemini, General Echo got the break he needed in the music industry. Throughout his short life and music career, he had recorded many songs and worked with some big name record producers in the music business here in Jamaica. His debut song is said to be People Are You Ready? People are you ready? Oh, oh Lord. You know that song. He had a number one hit with the song, Arlene. You know that song, Arlene must the dream, you the dream. Arlene must the dream, you the dream. You have been, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, that song, that song. Another popular song of his was, Drunken Master. Yes. So, his career was relatively successful. You know, to live to age 24 and was able to put out these hit songs. That's a success. All right, let's continue on the farm. So, below occupation and calling, we see. Birthplace and it is empty. Nothing was written there. Well, I can tell you about his early life. General Echo was born Earl Anthony Robinson on December 8th. 1955 at Maiden Lane in Kingston. He was raised mainly by his mother because his father had died while he was a very young boy. His mother's name was Elma Robinson who was a dressmaker. She was a woman who believed in having a sound education. So the young Earl Robinson, 
I'm gonna just say General Echo, though he was not called General Echo at this point of his life, but I'm just gonna say General Echo throughout the whole video. So, the young General Echo attended school up to high school level. The last school he attended was Kingston Senior School, now called Kingston High School, located on King Street in Kingston. It was at this school, you know, that he built on or developed his passion for music. Kingston Senior School maintained a music department where students learned and played musical instruments, sung, and also held concerts. So the school was big in terms of music. Its music department realized and understood the importance of music to young men in Kingston. It helped to shape them, helped them to focus on something other than activities that would be detrimental to them. Many popular Jamaican musicians and recording artists passed through this school, such as members of the hip tones, the techniques, the uniques, Derek Morgan, Marcia Griffiths, and some others. No doubt, General Echo participated in the music activities at this school, and his love for music deepened. But he did not dive completely into music after school. After graduating from Kingston Senior School, he got employment at an electrical company in downtown Kingston. I think it was called Pearl Electrical. Yes. So he worked at this electrical company before starting off his music career. Alright, so let's move over now to the right side of the farm where we will look at his cause or causes of death. So on the right side of the farm here, cause of death. It says, cause of death, immediate cause. And they wrote, shock and hemorrhage as a result of gunshot injury to the head and to further say, death was justifiable homicide and no one criminally responsible. This is what created the shock. Because this is the conclusion of the inquest into his death and the death of his two friends. So the inquest concluded by giving this as the official cause of death. So let's read it one more time. It says, cause of death, immediate cause, shock and hemorrhage as a result of gunshot injury to the head and to further say death was justifiable homicide and no one 
criminally responsible. All right, let's look at the first part of this. The first part we are, that I'm highlighting here, it says, cause of death, shock and hemorrhage. Now, shock and hemorrhage, it means that, hemorrhage means that there was massive bleeding. So, General Echo bled to death. Shock and hemorrhage. Shock meaning that the body went through a shock because of the sudden loss of blood from his vein, from his arteries. So hemorrhage means massive bleeding. So what it is saying here is that the cause of death is massive bleeding as a result of gunshot injury to the head. So he was shot in his head. That police officer who pulled the trigger ensured that he was killing General Echo because he was shot in his head. And as a result, he bled out to death. Then you have the second part of the cause of death, which says, to further say death was justifiable homicide and no one criminally responsible. Look at that. The inquest is saying that the killing was justifiable. Now, I cannot say what was discussed and what was presented in that inquest for them to come to the conclusion of saying that the homicide was justifiable. All right, so let's put that up on the screen. So this is the official cause of death for General Echo. It is not satisfactory to the public. It is not pleasing to the family members and friends of this artist. But this is what it says. It says cause of death, immediate cause, shock and hemorrhage as a result of gunshot injury to the head and to further say death was justifiable homicide and no one criminally responsible. By saying it is a justifiable homicide and by saying no one criminally responsible, those police officers walked free in a period when there was no indicum, in a period when the police investigated itself, this was just another murder that police officers got away with. Thanks for watching and remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more interesting videos like this.